Hi, uh, my name is Matt. Uh, so I'm here to talk about web components. Um, so, and why they're, why they're kind of cool and interesting and why you should be using them. So first of all, let's talk about web components. Um, just a show of hands, who here has, is a, a programmer, web developer, does something with programming? Cool. Uh, keep your hands raised if you have uh, seen or heard about web components before. Some people, keep your hands raised if you've used web components before. That's almost no one, so that's awesome. Uh, so I'm here to talk about web components, um, but before we get to that, I want to first talk about contact lenses. Um, that's probably not what you signed up for. Just roll with me. So a bit of the history of contact lenses. Um, this was the original design for the contact lens. Um, if you can believe it, it was uh, first hypothesized that uh, submerging your head in a bowl of water, um, Leonardo da Vinci said, hey, this might, uh, the way that water reflects in a bowl might change the way that you view uh, you know, the world. Uh, so he drew a whole bunch of, uh, I don't know. Uh, so this is the first idea for the contact lens. Obviously not quite practical yet. Um, so uh, this is in the 1500s. In the 1600s, the philosopher Rene Descartes uh, tried to uh, improve on this design um, by taking a, uh, a cylinder of water um, and contacting it directly on the eyeball um, and saying that, hey, you can use this and it'll, uh, it'll improve your vision. It corrected for astigmatism. It was amazing, except that because that it was a giant disc, like a telescope straight, uh, going straight out of your eyeballs, you couldn't blink with them. So that might have been a problem. Um, and this was, the, this was the state of the art in contact lenses for about 200 years. In the 1800s, they started to improve on this design. Uh, there were uh, a number of glass blowers that began to uh, be able to create uh, spheres and shaped glass that, um, that could be used to uh, implant directly on your eye. The problem here was that these uh, contact lenses, one, were made of glass, so they weren't uh, permeable. So you were essentially suffocating your eyeballs as you were, as you were using them. And uh, the lenses were the size of your entire eyeball. So uh, you know, it, was, uh, it, was, it took a little bit of time for, uh, you know, th this didn't uh, make a whole lot of progress. In the early 1900s, um, this started to get a little bit better. Um, uh, contacts got a little smaller. People started using hard plastics uh, rather than glass. But it still wasn't permeable. Um, you still had to use wax and this applicator to put the contacts on your eyeballs. And you could only wear them for three to four hours before your eyes would essentially suffocate. So this was really hard to use. You know, it wasn't until the 1950s that um, they began to experiment with silicone contact lenses um, and something that was soft, air permeable, and that um, you, know, you could use for a while, um, potentially dispose, clean, um, and, and wear on a day-to-day -day basis. But it, final, you know, but it took a really long time for us to get to the point where um, we invented LASIK and then no one has to wear contacts anymore. But <clears throat> I guess my point is that um, the history of contact lenses is also a history of weirdness. Um, that the idea for the contact lens was something that had been floating around in the ether for a long time, um, hundreds of years, but it took an extraordinary amount of technology and progress before the weirdness factor um, overtook the, you know, th that, uh, that receded and uh, convenience began to improve. Right? For those first ideas of the contact lens, I wouldn't wear them. Like, even if they had the benefit of I wouldn't have to wear spectacles, um, it was still just too weird to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think the web components are kind of like that. Um, you know, <laughs> that the idea of the web component uh, is this idea of building custom HTML elements inside of a browser. Um, the concept has been standardized and in specifications for about five years, but they were just a little bit too weird for people to use. Uh, I think that that's changing pretty rapidly, and I'm really excited about it, so I just want to you know, share, the, uh, share the gospel. 
I, I think that they're awesome. So I kind of want to show what this looks like um, with a custom element that I built yesterday. So this is a Joy-Con. Uh, it's for the Nintendo Switch. And we're going to try to do some live coding. So let's see how this goes. So I am actually going to cheat. Uh, I'm going to add a script tag to this page. Oh, no, localhost. So this should have added a script tag for this Joy-Con element. I'm going to edit. I'm going to add in a Joy-Con element. OK, so you see this little component? This is a web component. So I'm going to now j.side equals, this is the right Joy-Con. Uh, I want the Y button to trigger the left, and j.right equals A. So now it's green, so if I do this right, yeah, all right. I'm going to move around now. So the cool thing about this is that I didn't have to do anything fancy, right? I just put this on uh, my page, and now I can use my Joy-Con controller. This is using an HTML5 gamepad API, um, and it's pretty sweet. So as I said, like web components are now really easy to use. Um, you can just drop them on your page. You don't have to reload. You don't have to put in a whole bunch of like crazy build steps. Um, there's no webpack or rollup or um, broccoli or whatever other tools you want to use, right? It's, it, we're back to the, to the good old days of just putting something on a page and you're ready to go. Uh, the idea of using the technology that's built into the browser is something that I think is really important, and you know, we're, we've been kind of moving away from that over time, right? And, and the fact that you can use a lot of these uh, texts, like, that's sweet, right? It's, it's the old, like, in the jQuery days, um, you know, you could do a dollar and then some selector, and now you have document.query selector, right? The fact that this stuff is being built into browsers is really exciting. And it works everywhere, right? It doesn't matter whether or not I'm um, building a React application, if I'm building something that's just vanilla HTML, if I have some Ruby on Rails or some Django application. Like, you can drop web components in no matter where you're at, and they'll continue to work, right? You're not prescribing the technology in order to build out your components. So that's the theory, at least. Um, but for a really long time, the idea of a web component didn't work at all. Um, and it sucked. Uh, there was a lot of weirdness that was associated with trying to use a web component. So the first is that um, because that the spec itself was designed and kind of promulgated by Google um, as part of their Polymer project, the only browser that you could consistently use web components natively was in Chrome and all of Chrome's derivatives. Um, which meant that uh, you know, Edge uh, never had it, Firefox never had it, Safari certainly didn't have it. In fact, they were very opposed to even implementing it in their browsers at all. They said, we would never put this in. It's, this is terrible. So as a result, um, you ended up having to bring in these giant polyfills um, to get the same technology to work in other browsers. Right? So the idea of, well, we're going to bake this into browsers. It's going to be really fast. And now you have to load 200 kilobytes worth of polyfills to make this work on Safari. And given that you know, JavaScript is a performance killer, um, that also meant that trying to use web components, especially on mobile devices, was really slow and really painful. <clears throat> Again, because that um, Google was kind of the promulgator of this, uh, if you wanted to use web components, you also had to use Google's frameworks. And the main tool that people were kind of banking on for this was a framework called Polymer. Um, this is a library that really never gained a whole lot of traction in the outside world, especially as tools like React and even Google's own Angular were taking advantage, like, in, you know, exceeding in popularity. So if you wanted to use uh, web components, then you basically had to use this kind of weird other technology um, that no one else was using. Speaking of which, you also had to use a whole bunch of uh, custom build tools. Um, so every web component that was built for the last five years had to be downloaded using 
this specification called HTML imports. I know this was never implemented anywhere outside of Chrome. Um, if you wanted to use a, a component, you had to link in an HTML tag to get other elements to work. Um, it was funky and weird, and no other tooling worked with it. If you wanted to install a web component in your application, you had to use this package manager called Bower. Is anybody still using Bower by chance? Exactly. Um, it was painful. Uh, and then if you wanted to bundle up your application so that it would work across other browsers, include those polyfills and whatnot, you got to use a whole bunch of custom Google-provided support-only build tools, right? So you couldn't use your, your fancy Webpack, grunt, gold, broccoli, brunch, uh, dinner, whatever tools that you wanted to use, right? And this was just enough weirdness to turn most people off from web components in the whole. Right? We, were, we were at that kind of plastic or glass lens phase of the technology spectrum. Right? It's, no, it's no wonder that other tools made a whole lot of progress because that they met people where they were at. Um, and you know, whether you were using React or Vue or Angular, like, the entire community kind of got on board and said, we have problems, we're going to solve them, and we're not going to force you to use our weird kind of environment. So it's been about five years since uh, web components were first introduced, and a lot has changed in that time. But most people haven't heard about web components since these were initially developed. So a lot of that weirdness that people really had, you know, that, that, that turned uh, you away from using this interesting technology went away. So this idea of HTML imports um, is no longer required to use web components. Right, if you want to bundle something up as a script tag, you can just do that and use ES modules. The same is true for how you package and distribute your applications. Right, if you, you don't have to use Bower um, anymore, you can just upload and deploy your stuff to NPM. Right, I used Unpackage, the NPM, like CDN, to get it to work in my application uh, to get this to work. Right, which means that you know, we're making Sean Larkin happy, happy and you can, you, know, you can use Webpack or whatever other tools that, that you're comfortable using. I use Rollup to build up this application, or you don't have to use anything at all, right? It's totally up to you. Because that this was a conversation that happened, um, you know, after uh, several browsers such as Apple and Firefox said, hey, we're not gonna implement this weird, crazy thing that you built out, Google. Let's go back to the drawing board and figure out a way to make this technology work better. And what they ended up implementing was the version one of the custom element specification that everyone could kind of agree to, and it's now being implemented directly, right? So I'm using Firefox, and it has native custom elements built in. The same is true for Safari and Chrome, which means that in the devices where performance is most important, you have native implementations and don't have to deliver polyfills on those mobile browsers. That's a huge performance win. You can also write vanilla custom elements really easily. Um, the, the V1 of the custom element spec looks very similar to the way that you might write a React component or an Angular component, right? You extend a custom element, and then you have uh, different lifecycle hooks that you can use to render content inside of it. So in this case, I have this hello world component, and uh, you know, I have a render, and I can just use standard web technologies, enter HTML and whatnot to, um, to build out my applications. So this is pretty exciting. If you're not into writing vanilla applications, don't worry. The web components community has got your back. Um, you can use any number of thin layers of syntactic sugar to get that same kind of framework experience. Um, and it doesn't have to be Polymer. That's one of the tools that's available. But there's an entire plethora of tools and technologies that are built on top of the custom element specification that work really well, whether that's Skate.js, Nutmeg, Stencil, um, Xtag. There's a whole lot of just open source, freely available uh, wrappers that allow you to get some of that same um, you know, data binding, reactive um, updates, JSX, that sort of tooling is all available now. The one that I'm really excited about is this library called Stencil. This is an open source project. Um, it's built by the Ionic team um, that is a compiler for web components. So the idea is that you write your application um, using a set of TypeScript decorators, and you run it through a build process, and after that build process is done, the framework disappears, and now you get our vanilla custom elements that you can drop onto a page. 
So this Joy-Con web component that I built is a stencil component. Um, this is part of it, but essentially all that I'm doing is I'm writing a handful of decorators, this at component, specifying the types of tags that I want. Um, I'm using Shadow DOM here, but you don't have to. And then I have a handful of props. Um, and there's a render lifecycle hook. Um, all of this looks very similar to React. It's even using JSX under the hood. So <clears throat> if you're comfortable building using any of the kind of modern, fancy web uh, technologies, you should feel very comfortable using web components. And if you don't want to move to a totally different um, component uh, library to build out these web components, that's OK, because if you're using a framework, it's very likely that they already will export to web components. As an example, Angular, the latest version, um, supports what they call Angular elements, which allow you to take one of your Angular components and wrap them in custom elements so that you can drop those uh, script tags without having to um, you know, make your entire application Angularized. Uh, Vue and Dojo support this same model. And React, you can use a couple of wrappers to make this work as well. The downside to this is that you still have to pack, bundle the entire uh, you know, the Vue uh, runtime with your web components. So they're relatively large. But it's still a great way to ensure interoperability for your applications. Right. The other nice thing is that you can use them inside of your applications. So if you have a React application and you just want to drop a custom element in, you can do that just as an HTML element. Right? This works really well to start as kind of the leaf nodes of your application. So your buttons, your reusable components. Right? You may have, in your, in your company, you may have 30 different applications. Some of them are written in Vue. Some of them are written as uh, Rails applications. But you can use the same reusable custom element across all of them. Like these leaf nodes are a great use case to get started with. And this is finally starting to pick up speed. Um, last week, um, uh, developers from GitHub so that they finally removed jQuery from their UIs. And he said, like, the way that we did this was not to pick another new hotness in the framework, but just to use the platform, right? So GitHub, as a company, has built over a dozen custom elements that they're using on their page. So if you go to GitHub, you're seeing a lot of these web components already in your, in your browser. And a bunch of other companies are starting to use these web components as well. Last year, YouTube got a rewrite that was built using Polymer. Um, I work at Union Pacific, and we have a reusable component library that we built out a few years ago, but as a series of Angular 1.x components. Well, now we're stuck on Angular 1.x, and that sucks. So we'd like to, we're rebuilding all of our reusable components using web components so that we can use whatever technology and framework that we want in the past. Uh, and there's a number of reusable uh, component uh, design languages that are being built using web technologies. I don't see Will around here, but um, he'll, I think he's going to be talking about Stellar, which is a design system that also is using Stencil under the hood. So I think these are really cool. And um, you know, we're finally kind of getting past that weirdness phase of the technology. <laughs> so what I would recommend is to give these things a shot. Um, take another look at web components, try and build something with them. Um, I'm, this is the most excited that I've been about web development for the last couple of years. Um, and I think that we're finally at a point where they're ready for prime time and people can just start to use them. So that's all that I had. Uh, again, my name is Matt, and thanks a lot. <laughs>